Accused, Justin, uh, Carl rather, uh, Gustavo. CD3215. I have a feeling this chip is actually maybe viable. It's a CD3215. Just found it on my desk and I know that the last job I did with those, the chips were ended up being fine. Oh, there's the other one. Um, because when I replaced them there was no change. And given the price of them, it's worth uh, me reballing those and having them on standby in case I need them. Okay, shift a bunch of crap out of the way and scratch my eye because by golly gosh the hay fevers drive me insane. Had to go do some mowing this afternoon and uh, once that grass touches me and everything it's like it, it's it's a rough night for me. Oh well. Let's see, yeah, Yanko. Who else have we got? Oh, looks like I missed everybody as I was busy scratching my nose. Hey Bryce, hey you're up late. Mark, Mick rather. Patio Patogi from Guam. Oh, don't think I've ever had anyone from Guam before. Hey Max, Yanko. Ah, Mr. Moore, hello. Welcome. I'm Jim Hook. Raphael. Uh, Sodder is here. Metabolist. Alright. Yep, um, this is out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Have a look. Put it back together. I've got another machine to do after this, but I thought I'd reassemble this one while I'm at it. Just call you Peter. Alright then. Hey, Stephen G. Let's have a look, see how bad things are. And I was lucky someone left a comment um, after the video had finished that I'd put this cap in the wrong place. I actually had it bridging between these two pads, so it was just a basically no effect. Fortunately, it's only a 0.1 microfarad cap, so it's for high frequency, um, high frequency decoupling. So it wasn't a critical loss, but um, yeah, it was good to still get it fixed up. Man, this chair feels too high. Hey, Mr. Taylor. Thanks for sorting out those containers for me. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're just going over to see if there's anything bad that we've missed with the ultrasonic. Overall, it looks pretty good. This is using the uh, water only wash. So you ultrasonic it and then you just wash it in deionized or distilled water, whichever you have available. Distilled is better, but that's pretty expensive stuff for some people, including me. And you don't put it through an alcohol rinse. You just simply yeah, wash off the ultrasonic liquid with water and then dry the board. And that's it. So it takes about 20 minutes at 120 for me on a um, heating pad. The ones that you use to ice, uh, separate iPad screens. And it does a pretty good job. You, know, you can see it's pretty damn clean really. I'm happy with that. That's good. Beard is getting thick, I agree. I really do need to shave it. I also want a haircut. This uh, this is getting a bit long. So we'll just put this thing back together. Hopefully everything will work. Okay, there's a bit of a thing here to watch out for. Looks like... Ah, that's no good. Looks like the adhesive from one of the labels has fallen into the... Oh, that's no problem good at all. We'll have to clear that out. A few cycles of the rain will probably fix that up. Hey, Stuart Menzies, how's it going? Oh, piano, good to see you. 
Ow. Just rain my nose into the eyepiece. I think it was a easy from up here. Alright, it's looking okay now. Yeah, uh, Wayne, I wouldn't mind getting one of those little 3 litre compressors, or even just a airbrushing one. I don't really want a full size compressor in this workshop though. They're cheap enough, I've just got to, as always, just get one. If you wanted to, you'd be able to save a decently sized lunch in that vid. Yes, I guess I would actually. <laughs> I did contact the person about the solid state drive. Um, initially they were interested, but the cost starts racking up pretty quickly. So I'll let them do it themselves. If they start from scratch, just from a bare solid state drive and reinstall, um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, I've got so many things just to add on to this. What am I bringing the chassis up for? Yeah, if they start with just like a 250 drive and then reinstall MacOS, then they can do it pretty cheaply themselves. Hey, NW Tesla. What was I looking for? No, the sticker. Which probably will not stick properly now. Especially when I put it on incorrectly. This is the sort of stuff that ends up wasting a lot of my time in the day, but you got to do it. Uh, you can't just spend all day reballing SMCs, even if you want to. And I guess that's why you hire people. Damn it! Put some glasses on, Paul. Now, there's no warranty on that sticker, but it's just more for reference in case someone needs a serial number or something. I just prefer to try and put back, yeah, it's got the serial number, the motherboard number, the EMC, all that sort of thing. It's just a convenience thing. Anyway, yes, that's why I should hire someone at some point, but until I get this house, and that's not sticking, so that's not going to go on it. Yeah, until I actually have the deeds to this property and can do things with it, I probably won't be looking at hiring any anybody. It's a little hard to set up things when it's not your property. And it's not a property designed for... Uh, designed for staff to come in and out of. Cause this, this place is a bit of a fortress to stop the fur kids getting out. Thanks Travis. Yeah, I just got them the other week. Except I can't see more than about this far on them. They're intentionally that way. They're meant just for close up so I can actually do my iPhone screw jobs. Because that was the biggest problem I was having. So I'd be basically just going by feel when it came to iPhones, putting the screws in and out of the screens. And that's fine. I mean, it's good to be able to just do it by feel, but it is occasionally a nice thing to be able to see what you're screwing. Just to make sure you're picking up the right bits and pieces and putting them in the right place. Particularly when you've got phones like the 7 and the 8, 
where they chop and change the tri wing around. Alright, that should be good. There should be a game, Jim. Escape from the Fur Kid Fortress. But yeah, this place is fairly secured and it's going to become more secure once I can uh, own the place. Because right now we just have mesh fencing, sort of um, 70 by 75 by 50 mesh. And I wish to replace that with color bond, 8 foot high, through to the ground, and make it completely impervious. Alright, looks like Blur's decided to be the uh, teenager of the day. Who can blame him? Who can blame him? Okay, where's my fan? There we go. At least it's cooler now, given that it is nearly 10 o'clock at night. It is 10 o'clock at night, 10 past 10 in fact. I don't know why I bother putting that fan in. Could have waited. I guess you get used to having to put the fans in early with the other boards as well as all the various bits and pieces that have to go with it like the, ah, I've trapped that cable again like on the 1466 and so many others where you've got to put those rubber shrouds on the heat sink before you drop the board in and the number of times you forget to do that is that everything? Get that microphone in. Uh, Demaras, anything 1120? Oh, actually, yeah, GenCAD it should be supported. Anything, I think, from 1050 or 1060 onwards, in fact. But certainly 1128 would have it. If you find you've got a file that isn't reading, just send it through to me as usual. Like with these glasses, I can actually put in most of these flexes without having to go under the microscope. They're not very strong glasses, but um, they just give me that little bit of extra confidence. In most cases. Okay, we're going to go back to the microscope. <laughs> and the trouble is, you'll be able to get an idea of how little difference there is actually in my vision. Because I'm wearing the glasses and I'm focusing to what I want under the microscope. And you'll notice on screen it's not that severely different to my unassisted vision. Okay, what's going on here? Is there an obstruction in there? It's behaving like something's obstructing it. No, just reluctant. Maybe the ultrasonic sort of made it a bit dry. There we go. Hey Harold, how's it going? It's always nice to see people drop in. Okay, where's my T6? No, you're T4. T6, we are on our way. Oh, it's okay, Blue. One of us has to be the um, teenager. So I'm glad it was you. We all think it. No. Nope. 
I don't know where that short screw goes. And it is not there. It's here. Anyway, once we're done with this, we do have another MacBook I've got to deal with. But like I said, I like to try and have as few open MacBook systems, or few jobs open as I can. Otherwise my shelves fill up and I start forgetting what I'm doing. Well, hopefully we'll go bong, Stuart. A partner at work forced me to get glasses after a pursuit with a stolen car. I was on the radio. Yeah, VK just passing. Ah, so you weren't able to tell them where you were. <laughs> That's useful. Okay, it looks like I've jumped a screw somewhere. That's not a problem. Since they're all pretty much the same. For most. Yes, where are drivers? So I'm still trying to work out how to do the giveaway. I don't know what YouTube's requirements are, or Facebook requirements are, or anything. No. Unfortunately, it'll probably be limited to Australians, I'm sorry. But, in fairness, that's punishment for all the years as a kid, when I would see competitions come up, and it would always be for residents of the United States only. And I'd be like, damn you! So for all those years I missed out, now I get to dish out some payback and say for Australians only. Okay. Yeah, you're a bit of a mess here. Aha. Uh -huh. In it goes. Ah. But, uh, let's see. So, yeah, I'm giving away this box of Wearer drivers. This is the six box, six pack. It's got all the drivers for the iPhone, it's got the Pentelove, the Tri Wing. And the uh, PH00, PH00, that sort of, and one flathead driver. I don't know what you use the flathead driver for, maybe for flicking up um, connectors if you're Jason Vilmer from SDS. Personally, I can't do that. I know he does it willingly, but um, it would drive me insane. So, yeah, I've got to work out how I'm going to do a giveaway for these. And um, they're really good, they come with the holder. I really do enjoy these drivers. But, like I said, the trick is how to do the giveaway. I've got a few other things I want to give away. Some old, old equipment. I've got a uh, Velleman 10 megahertz LCD um, scope, which basically I never use anymore. I used to use it for RS-232 signaling and stuff. Yeah, just for... Okay, what have I done here? Something ain't right. And I'm uh, probably going to give away two of my power supplies as well. Once my new ones arrive. So yeah, I've got a few giveaways. Just not sure how to go about them. Yeah, still, why would I give them to you if you've already got them? That's like me wanting to... I mean, I gotta admit, when the box arrived today, I was like, I want to keep this. I'm not giving this away. This is mine. Mine, mine, mine. Yeah, you get selfish like that. Even though I've already got two sets myself. It's like, ooh, but the box is so nice. I've got to keep it. I've got to collect it all. Unfortunately, there's no Torx drivers in those ones, so it's actually no good for MacBooks, funnily enough. So I do wish they had a, say, like, T1 through to T8 set, but they don't seem to. But you can buy them individually, so it's not a problem. So 
somebody found some Mac Mini board view files? Really? I use a flathead screwdriver with a standoff screw. Oh, God, yeah. I use um, a standoff driver. Hey, where's my overhead? Thank you. Southern wonder, anything I ever want was an order of fries from McDonald's. Did you really win in that case? Or was that just... You became a victim. There is a YouTube program that's randomly selected. I thought so as well, Wayne, but I couldn't find it. The only one I kept finding was something about... Um, it was an external website that YouTube is now blocking. So I thought, well, that can't be a good thing. I suppose it wouldn't be too hard. All I have to do is perhaps say... Well, I've got a couple of choices. I can make people email me a message saying I want this driver and then I randomly pick a number between one and however many emails I've got and then that's it. Uh, let's put the battery in and see if it goes kablango. Kablamo! Uh, please tell me I'll put the right, yeah, I'll put the right mag safe in. Whew. Worried there for an instant. So it's going to be more drama just trying to work out how to do this than actually doing it. I know there are certain legalities in Australia as well that you can't force people to have to sign up to something. Which is fine, like I said, you know, I'll just get people to email me. And then you've got to stop people, people spamming you. Trying to increase their chances stuff like that so I might have to get people to drop their email address and the physical delivery address or something I don't know I, I've got to come up with something winning more cholesterol from Maccas yep that'll be about it hello Nicole are you Sorry, we've got one screw missing in this setup, I remember now. There's that one up there. Okay, and we return the container to the stack. And let us pray that we have a bomb. We won't get it on the... Probably have to charge it up. Oh no, it, it won't. Nice. Straight to the point too. And immediately we got charge. Pick a video. First name, city, state. What should they get? Most comical. Uh, See so if you got to start picking on an actual quality of the content that they contribute, then it gets difficult. Then the biases creep in. All that sort of trash. Oh, English Hedgehog's here. Hello. Yes, two keys are missing. And it looks like the actual uh, seesaw system is missing out of one of them. I might have one of these, but at least they're replicated on this side as well. So it's not a problem. Let's tilt this up so we don't reveal personal information that doesn't want to be revealed. Paintbrush. Okay, 59%. We're charging. Looks good. Uh, ooh, just check see if there's a password on this. There it is. Hey Andrew. Okay, charging is happening. I can see it's already picking up. Sorry, I know this is boring. 
Oh man, spinning hard drives. Very much outdated nowadays, aren't they? Okay, click is working. Seems good. I'm happy with that. The only thing is it can be a bit of a problem when you're trying to see if you fixed a click fault and you're waiting on the hard drive. Oh god, everything's booting slowly. Shut down. See if it works without... Yep, still working. Marvellous. Every time I see the full view here, I wonder if you have any shares in Systema. Yeah, <laughs> I buy a great deal of their stuff. What I mostly do around here is every two or three weeks, actually every month or so, the local shop supermarket has the Systema range on half price. And whenever that happens, I usually go in and buy about 10 of everything that I need. Uh, Mr. Lemons decided to um, be critical now of my face. I do need a shave. I just I'm being a bit lazy lately. Oh my goodness! Cancel. U torrent has come up. Cancel. I don't want U torrent. Mu torrent rather. Shut down. Shut down. Quit. Okay, finally. For long term storage, hard drive is much safer than solid state. Now, I suppose that can be debated, I suppose, because you're retaining magnetic properties rather than charge. So, yes, I will concur with that. I still would like to keep a couple, though. There's junk on their screen, just random bits of scrap. Alright. That's fixed, that's done. I've done my job there. Now I can put that away safely. Put that in the outgoing queue shelf. And now pick up the next MacBook. Oh. I mean, as it is, everything's going to the cloud anyway. Or pretty close to it. Should I cover this person's details? Probably. Yeah, I'll do. So we've got, we've got 14.25, 14.65 rather. And I've got a bar strip on the back, so no point trying to power that one up. Looks so like we're overblowing our exposure. Yep. Sixty terabyte magnetic hard drives coming soon. Yeah, I'd like to see that happen. In a hurry. And we've really struggled to get out of the eight and ten. I mean, I'm all for it. I really could do with some much bigger hard drives. Because most of the machines that come in here are PC machines or iPhones, things like that. I will tend to back up the data before I do anything with them. So it's very easy to chew up you know, 10, 20 terabytes. Is Sonia in here? Hello, Sonia. Man, that's been chewed out. I don't know why Lewis hates reballing SMCs, it's not that bad. I guess we all have our pet peeves. Alright, this looks like a freaking disaster already. 
battery off. I think we'll just straight away take this board out, see what's going on with the BIOS area. Now, Dr. No, well, you could always go back to things like the old Seagate ST255s, combine it with the glorious big clack noise that you make when you switch on your IBM XT or PC first thing in the morning. Go make yourself a cup of coffee while you wait for auto execute and config sys to start up. Yeah. That battery's cactus, man. Airbags are almost ready to deploy on that one. Oh, Jason. Everyone say hello to Jason. SDS Telecom. Just the person I was mocking earlier. Jason, I was just mocking you because of the incredible ability you have with using a flat-bladed screwdriver to knock off... Um, to knock off connectors in iPhones, something that would, it makes my c toes curl really. I mean, you obviously do a perfectly good job of it, but it still makes my toes curl. Four, two, three, one. Make sure I don't lose this. Four, two, three, one. You replace a person's machine, you can't replace the data. Oh, you were listening to the prior tool comments. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I suppose I'll see a um, friendship denial now on Facebook. I'll go looking for you and it's like, this person cannot be found. Hey Christian, so you, you got yourself uh, another stream, so you didn't miss out too much on the first one. Now I'm not sure if this one's a absolutely a BIOS failure, or whether it's something else, like maybe a bad trace or something like that, which is why I want the board out, so I can have a look. Is this a 164? Is this a 164 or a 30 3435? Oh, okay. Oh yeah, longer connector there, 3435. Don't do a lot of these 11 inch ones. I've got a, one or two of them myself as machines that I should probably get rid of. But I do tend to hold on to them thinking maybe I might need one just to do comparisons and things like that. Jason is number one or number two or top ten for... what is he number one or number two for? Okay, we've lost the lock connector for the keyboard backlight flex, so fortunately they're easy to replace. What else have I got missing here that I'm not seeing? I think everything is ready to come out. Is it? No. One screw. Always got to be gentle. I don't know when you're going to break things. Okay, we are out. Ah, uh, the hay. Oh, flipping heck. Alright, this is going to be fun. You know, I remember punching holes in three and a half inch. Well, I don't know about the three and a half inch, but I definitely did it on the five and a quarters. Take a notch out of the side. Even bought myself a notcher. What I did used to do with the three and a half is, is there was uh, you'd use four DOS, and then a pr another formatting tool, and it would let you. Yeah. Holy crap. Alright, so this... oh man... 
Alright, I'm not actually complaining really, I enjoy this sort of a challenge. So, what we've got here is a cluster job. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Backlight ball's good. So we've just got a bunch of nasty corrosion got picked up. Wiped out the BIOS traces. Looks like it's taken out something next to it. I'll get back to that in a second. I just want to do my big overhaul. This here, that's going to be trouble. I don't even know what... I was going to say Orsus Power Good, but... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I can see why this might have had issues. See how there's this little stalk here, this via stalk that I'm exposing? My guess is... Yeah, what's going on there? So it goes to here and it disappears down here. So they wouldn't put a stalk there unless it was going off to somewhere else. Otherwise they'd just have a pad. So what's probably happening is either that's supplying whatever it is that we need or it's sending it off to another part of the board and that other part of the board's not getting it. I see. Peter Van Yumane. Let's see. Light watching repairs. Oh, thank you. Oh, more than Lewis. Oh, jeez. Now yeah, we're going to get fight time. Okay, so what board did we say this was? 34. What? My brain's failing on me. 34, 35. Shows I don't do them enough. Open. Just realized I knocked out chat. Yeah, it has had prior work on it. Okay, bus. Yeah, okay, see, so that's an important pin. That's your SPI line, or one of them. So, without that working all the way through, it'll probably cause trouble. Let's see what else uses that. Okay, so the bus. So I have a feeling that the ROM chip's probably okay, but it needs the connections done properly on it to make it work again. Yes, chip select low. So, and then this wire is perhaps a little too thin. It'll break pretty quick and easy. Uh, yeah, it it just needs a bit of a rework. Plus, all this has to come off. See how that's just flaking off? That's because the corrosion's gotten under there. You gotta clear that all away. Otherwise, it will come right on back. It's like cancer. This stuff. Uh, Stuart, I'm guessing that really the, the BIOS chip itself is going to be fine and it's attached to the case, so we'll be okay. At least I'm damn well hoping so, because otherwise I will have to construct a new one and I really don't want to do that. Getting this circuit board cancer out of the way is more important right now. Wow, uh, it's really gotten into everything. <laughs> it's everywhere.
Could be some corrosion under that. But uh, we'll, we'll check that out later. It's always nice having a good sharp X-Acto knife. Just knocks the tops right off this stuff. Alright. Paint stripper. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a fast way of doing it. Let's see, 10 minutes without talking about Flex. So tell me, Paul, who provided you that nice little software? Oh, I don't know, some random Australian outback dude. Apparently his name's Paul Daniels, not to be mixed up with the magician who's dead from the UK. Uh, yes, if you're a professional board view, uh, if you're a professional board repairer, then consider flex board view yes you can get and use free board view programs like open board view which have the same code base originally oh this might be a broken one we also support iphone files now we don't have as many as zxw or any of the others yet but we do have we do support um, a few of the most important ones Jason Vilma actually uses Flexboard View now too, when he can. Obviously for the ones that we don't have, he has to switch back to ZXW. Jason, you're still around? Get on your salesman's hat and start pitching for me. Okay, that resistor's going to need replacing probably. Whew. Peter Henko, how do you become repairman? Any good story about my background? I don't really have a much of a background um, on this. I've always been into this sort of stuff, as in inventing, repairing, and all that. I have come to the idea that I really am more of a toolmaker, engineer, inventor type person. So yeah, no one cares about these traces; they're gone as. So I wouldn't say that board view is my... Ah, oh sorry, board view, what am I talking about? I wouldn't say that repair work is my primary thing, but it's something I do to support my habits of wanting to invent things. Man, this is really like a root canal. So we're an ad for you... Ad on YouTube for Paul Daniels and Easton... What? Looks like so skincare cream, that's hilarious. It's weird, but alright. Let's brush off 99% of the crap that's there. And let's drown it in alcohol. Oh, fellow Australians. Um I found that uh what brand is it? Uh Methylade Spirits, who produces it? I keep thinking hunters, but I think it's something else. Damn it. Anyway, there's a, there's a brand of methylated spirit you can get in Australia, and I was happy to notice that it's got absolutely no methyl alcohol in it. It's just 95% or, or ethyl alcohol, a bit of denaturing agent, and uh, water, which is really good. So I'm going to start using that a little bit more now. Why can't I remember the name of the damn brand, though? It's the one you get in Woolworths, Australian Woolworths. Diggers, Diggers, that's the brand. Yeah, it's Diggers Methylated Spirits. And if you check the safety sheets and everything like that, there is absolutely no mention of methyl alcohol anywhere in it. And all the warnings uh, pertaining to ethyl alcohol are basically just yeah, normal drinking alcohol issues. And of course there's the bittering agent that's in there so good luck trying to drink that without chucking your guts up or spewing out I've got some pretty damn good bittering agents these days yeah diggers yeah anyway, it seems to be like I said 95% uh, ethyl and no methyl in it and that's really the main thing I, I just don't want methyl alcohol around here Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I am just looking at my alternatives. I mean, I don't mind isopropylene, but the fumes are a little heavier than what ethyl alcohol fumes are. In terms of, you know, they give me more of a headache and whatnot. A bit less pleasant to the human body. Speaking of which, time to put on the uh, lung saver. This is quite a creative mess, this one. Every time I think I'm finished scraping away, I'll find something else that I need to scrape. And yeah, uh, my biggest concern is this veer here, and what I'm going to do about it. Tangled up in that? Impossible. Okay. It's not dead, just needs some suitable revitalization. I'm not going to trust those resistors, so I'll take them away. Do I use alcohol to find hotspots? Yes, I do. Yep. Oh man, that trace just vanished on me too. Yeah, so I just lifted that resistor off. At least I think it was a resistor. Good bashing the tip of my JSO2 into the desk. That's a pretty cool effect. Hey, my Sarah. How's it? Oh, Catherine's here. Hello. Uh, Jim, no, I don't have a thermal imaging camera. I'm not that rich. And I'd seen it by... I'd seen it be putting the money towards this house getting this house than uh, getting a thermal engine for now. Yeah, more junky junk. 
stuff coming up. Priorities right now. Priorities. Okay, so we do have a tiny... You probably can't see it in the camera, but there's a tiny bit of contact there. And I've got to work out how I'm going to do this. The problem is there's just not enough to really grab onto. How much flux do you consume in a month? Eh, not that much. Probably no more than what Lewis consumes in a day. I'm fairly conservative with my flux consumption. easier to do wicking that way than it is to actually try to drag the wick across the board surface. The only thing is I didn't quite get that little piece of wire that I wanted. Got it. The yeah, small solder bowl should be able to stick to it. The trouble is, yeah, I kind of, I need to put the ball on, run a wire, then put the chip down, and hopefully putting the chip down will not displace that ball. Yeah, that's always fun. So this one here probably was meant to go to there. And... That one to there. I'm trying to think what a natural point will be to put it. Oh wait, we have, yeah, okay, so that one there. Where are the pads for this one? Uh, the kitties are doing well, they're a little bit boxed in at the moment, so they're kind of complaining a lot about that, which is not helping my sleep at all. Because they will, they do wake me up at some awful hours in the morning, and it's starting to wear a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my kitties, but um, yeah, it's starting to wear me down a bit. I really need my sleep, and I'm not getting it. So I'm just trying to decide both aesthetically and structurally the best way I want to do this. Yeah, uh, cats being cats. That's pretty much true there too. This is one of those jobs where while it's not technically complicated, you still want to try your best with it. It's more just a case of going through the motions, getting things done right. Making sure none of that damn cancer is around. Yeah, so there's still there's little bits of it just floating around. We look after a lot of cats here. Not all of them are ours, we just look after them. We're trying to help them. We're kind of like a halfway house for cats. That looks like that trace is actually, it's got a nice size pad underneath here. 
Just don't know whether it's worth going down to it or not. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. But you can see there's this pad sitting under there on the next layer. Then again, that could actually be some other signal and the viewer is actually going through it. So maybe not such a good idea for me to just go in and drill down on it. I really don't trust that remaining bit of trace there. Ah, uh, Catherine Micro is doing really well. Like I said, considering the, the state he was in a year ago, we're very, very happy. I do need to monitor his sugar levels a lot, um, yeah, his blood sugar level a lot closer. We're kind of hoping that, yeah, we can get into this place or get the deeds to this place soon so that he's got more room and he can relax. Because right now, I think the stress of being cooped up in basically a shoebox is elevating his blood sugar level. And we'd like to get him off the insulin if possible. But to do that, we do have to get his blood sugar levels way back down. Yeah. Alright, what size resistors are these meant to be? 15 ohm. Oh, you guys suck. 15 ohm? Really? Oh, what size are you? 201s. Fifteen ohm two oh one. Uh you're four oh twos. Okay. See you later, Max. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, Marcelo, we've got a few. I'm not exactly sure of how many, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, we've got a few. It varies from day to day, too, because not all of them are inside the property. Some of them we just have to hope for the best and they're on the outside of the property still. And we try to bring them in. We can't force them to come in too easily because they will just cause trouble and then get out. Some of them just walk in and never want to go back out again. That's great. Like uh, Halo was one of those from last year. But a lot of them don't really appreciate being cooped up inside too much. Well, not inside, but just in the containment zone. Yeah, I know focus is a bit shoddy here right now. Even for, even for me, it's shoddy. There's a lot of prep work I'm doing here. It's a bit boring, I know. That is not what I wanted to do. Come. 
Oh, that's one. We'll start with that. Still waiting, watching you clean up the mess. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's. It's only a little bit of time. Okay, so let's fill it in nicely. Oh, we got a we got a visitor on the bench table right now. Hopefully, unfortunately, he's a bug that will probably stink if I move him. So I'm gonna have to let him just. Hey, dude. And away he goes. <sighs> have to get him out of here. I just got to find something that's not going to aggravate him. What are you doing, buddy? You're covered in the trash from around here. Great, so you got my tweezers. You won't go in the cardboard box, but you go in the tweezers. Oh. Yeah, stink beetle. Yep. Like I said, that's why I didn't want to irritate him. Because he would let me know pretty damn quick that he wasn't happy with me. It'd be good if you get bugs to do your rework for you, wouldn't it? You know, just say to them, look, uh, I need um, some... Particularly if you can get them to go under the BGA chips and repair some balls under the BGA. Imagine how cool that would be. That would be so very useful. Have yourself a trained army of BGA repair bugs. Bugs to fix the bugs. Okay, so we're gonna get some wire now. I'm probably gonna use my I'm probably gonna use my lint wire for this. Let's see how I go. This lint wire, it's actually a, uh, it's a multi-strand wire, but all the strands are insulated and it's used for antennas for shortwave radio, things like that. What's nice about it is that the strands are fine, they're all insulated and the insulation, at least the stuff that I'm getting, it burns off a lot easier than see your normal sort of stuff because I find I often have to put too much heat into the wire some ah oh, damn it okay and see how quickly that just let itself get the enamel burned off and then tinned that's why I like this stuff because it's very quick to 
takes order. So probably should shuffle that over just a wee smidge more. I'll give it a bit more length and then I can push it back. Uh, buggy nanobots. That'd be trouble. Hey Warren, how's it going? Anyway, I get this stuff from some guy in Russia or Ukraine, I think it is. I've had a video about it in the past. I've got a couple of spools of it. And it's pretty much all you'll ever need, ever. Not the prettiest, but it will we will do the job. Now you won't fix the nanobots, you'll eliminate them. And then one day you find out that they're quite um, sentinel and advanced and then you've got the Rick and Morty car battery scenario all over again. Okay, I kind of need to push that back up against the end cap of the resistor. I'm just going to hold the resistor. Yeah, it looks like I've lifted the resistor. Ah. Okay, that's good. This will have to be green covered because there is no way that these resistors are going to have the strength. It's probably going to move and I do. Ooh, lucky me. Well, at least I managed to get a decent sized blob there. And there. Normally I do not subscribe to the idea of using a blob of glue or metal or whatever to build strength, but in this case I think it's acceptable. So I push this back down, it didn't quite it lifted up when I was doing the other one. Now, the real trick, dealing with that little tiny ball, let's see if we can float her, uh, I'm just trying to think how I'm going to go about this one. I don't really think I... No, I suppose I can pre-tin this wire. We'll do it that way. This doesn't have a lot of strength though.
Yes, I have deliberately overshot. Fortunately, okay, so what I want to do is I've overshot, but then I want to leave it back over it. So I've got a place to capture a soldable. I shouldn't even need a sort of wall, should be able to just drop some paste in there and it should be good. I'm probably not trying to think, I don't think I'll move this or break this wire off until I've actually put the bars chip down. I'm thinking now I might have to, ah, oh, and you're breaking away too. Oh jeez. Yeah, you're disconnected as well. So we've got a th another one to do. Yep. Am I a Trekkie? No, I'm not. I've got nothing against Trekkies, but I'm just not. Um, I don't tend to be um, a group type person. So I don't seem to align to any particular you know, Star Wars, Trekkie or anything. I just... nothing. Just a drifter. Yeah, I'm probably not even nerdy enough to be a Linux person, a proper Linux person. I probably do not have the required qualifications for that status. Yeah, that's not quite how I wanted that to sit down. It's a bit tricky here because I've got alcohol just flowing around on the board and it ruins the action of the flux of course. Ah, after all that work you dingle back. Dust in the wind, that's a bit like it, yes. <laughs> now, proof of the fact that I really am not a Trekkie is the fact that I actually like the new ones. Like Discovery and um, the new movies. I mean, I didn't mind the old ones either. But um, I'm more than happy to watch the new stuff. which does seem to cause a little bit of rage with some people like how dare you you call yourself a tech nerd? I said no I don't
Uh, I haven't seen the Picard series. I have seen Avatars, but so I am somewhat curious to see how they do with that. Especially if he's involved with it. I mean, he's a good actor. Son of a gun, you're just fighting with me all the way on this one. Come on, you know what I want to do, so just do it. Okay, that almost got it perfect then. Except it's not. That'll do. It's in a bad position, but that'll do for now. Like I said, it's got us to be able to survive the BGA being, I mean, the um, bars being put back down, so that's a tall order for it. Where's this BGA? Uh, why do I keep saying BGA? I really don't know. BIOS. Probably because they both start with B. Thank goodness they sent it to me. Hopefully it hasn't been punched through though with the corrosion. Which it probably has. Let's have a look. No, it's been punched through. Son of a gun. Ah, uh, you just suck eggs. Alright, so I'm going to have to copy this to a new one. God damn. Sorry. Hopefully I can... Oh wow, it's eaten through and everything. Alright, let's see if we can copy this off. seriously bad. Got hit by something. I don't want to have to do something drastic like decap this or anything just to get to the bond wires. Shouldn't have to. I could always just rebuild it I suppose. Just prefer not to. Yeah okay, that's good. That one's good too. So we've just got this last one here. A little more scrapey scrapey. We might have some luck. Hey you user. Hey Prater. Yep, welcome back to me, I know. Get a little more solder. As long as it doesn't run up the damn mark. Okay, 
let's try that again. Uh, that's going to be good enough. Uh, I'm going to load this onto a reader. We have to read it off. Uh, let's see. Uh, put flux on that nice box of Wero drivers. Wrong one. Uh, that's the wrong size. This is the one that I want. Yep, I know, there's no flux on there. It doesn't bother me. Not at this point. Now we put the flux down. Uh, don't need to on this one because the ground pad here matches. You see how it matches? That's why I get these particular adapters. There is the adapter that came with the programmer and it definitely needed you to put the captain tape down. But this one does not. Yeah, it would help if Mr. Daniels aligned it a bit better though. That's okay. We'll just hot air it into position. Yes, Calvin, I'm left handed. Ambidextrous really, but yeah, I mean, predominantly left handed. Uh, Calvin, I'll be curious to see how it goes with the languages thing because I am. It is taking a fair bit of brain power for me to learn Chinese. I will not lie about that. Okay, it looks like that's on. Let's hope our programmer is actually active. And damn it, which pin's which? Pin one, right. Okay. Uh, what chip have we got here? Yeah, the 
25 QO 64 by E4. Nah. 25 QO 64 by E4. Oh, you lousy little... I always forget how it is for me to list the devices. Minus L. Wow, Paul can't spell Q064. I'll probably do it. Alright, SOIC 16, SOIC 8. I prefer not to do an auto detect. Most of them can't without risking the chip in some form. probably could have put that chip down after I cleaned its pins up but I prefer to not do that I prefer to burn it to a new chip and then uh, use that stick with the new one you want to learn Cantonese well, you'll have to learn Chinese first and then you'll have to learn how to pronounce it speak it as Cantonese I'm learning it as Mandarin so, um, yeah, I don't know whether it's the better or the worse option, but that's the way I'm going. I'm using a site called Duolingo. I'm pretty impressed with it. My wife's learning another language as well, just for the fun of it. Does that mean we don't have a lot of time in our lives? <laughs> okay. I'm supposed to have some fresh new BIOS chips here. Ah, there you are. Okay, it's all done. Let's see if this one's going to be any good. Yep, that'll do it. Is it the right size there? Yep, that'll do it. Beauty. So we'll just swap those over. Get this one off the heat gun. Try Quake with a G. Quite handy to have it auto start. Uh, Spanish is one of the easier ones to learn. The only reason I don't learn Spanish is because I really don't have any personal r reason to do so. But I've looked at it and yeah, I mean it certainly seems quite reasonable to learn it. Surprised most people aren't in America aren't bilingual.
there's no real point hot airing this down. All you need to do is just dam up the solder on the side. You can see when it's wicked in. Like that. should now be able to write that. Uh, let's see, we've got a different chip type. Ah. Well, we'll see how we go. We'll force it. If this doesn't work, then all I'll do is just pull off another chip from another board like this. I'll dig around in my pile now, just in case. 3437 should do the same trick anyway. Oh great, I pull out a 165 of all things. Normally every time I want a 3437, oh sorry, a 165, I'll get a 3437. Now I want a one and what do you know, it gives me a 165. Yeah, I've got one here anyway, if this doesn't work. Now what I will do is take the original chip, put it into the carrier. I never ever reuse the original chips. I prefer to keep them as a reference just in case things go all wrong. So I just baggy that up and note down what job it's for. Throw it back with the original job parts and leave it be. Uh, Jack, this is just a program called uh, MiniPro for Linux, and obviously it's meant to work with it's meant to work with these particular you know, MiniPro programmers. It does a pretty good job. Let's see if the reading of the code comes up all right. If it comes up the perfect verifier, then I'll consider it to be okay. Sonia, you can't have a babblefish. Stop trying to relive your hitchhiker's days. Uh, we've already written the code, that was two minutes, but now we're waiting for it to read and I suppose verify, so... I could have made it not do the verification process, but we may as well just spend the extra minute waiting for it. These are just the programs you get on eBay for under a hundred bucks. I think they you get a complete kit with all sorts of adapters for about eighty dollars now. Hey, Unostos. 
42, the answer to everything. Uh, the program uh, verification is okay. Uh, the program uh, doesn't care what type of BIOS it is. It, as far as it's concerned, it's just talking to a SPI device, and that's it. And the only reason why you try to have the right part number and whatnot is just so that you get the parameters for the speed and the voltages at least close enough. So I'm just going to add some flux to keep this thing a little bit cooler while I take it off. Because these BIOS chips, they're in everything. Macs, PCs, all sorts of things. Probably the worst BIOS or EEPROM type chips are the ones you get in the iPhones. Because they look like little... They just look like little 4-pin glass MOSFETs. And it's not until after you have lost it that you realize how important it was. Make sure you'll pin one down there. Alright. This is going to be tricky. Very tricky. I may do the green set now so that things sit tight. It means I've got to clean up things a little bit, but I've got to be careful cleaning up because if I brush too hard then I'll break what I've done. Like that. Uh, it's not broken, it's just bent it, but it Okay, I might just cut those off then. Save them getting snagged by the cleaning action. Uh, I do prefer to do things like the programming in consoles. Oops, you had a control there. But then again, I'm biased because I do like the console for a great deal of things. Being able to just get a log of what's going on as it happens in sequence straight away as plain text, there's a lot of value in being able to get that. Okay. Let's get ourselves some green goo. And this, my friends, is why you charge a good amount of money even for simple jobs. Like, can you just change the BIOS? Yeah, well, maybe it's going to take a little longer than just changing the BIOS. Every now and then you may get lucky and the job goes quick, but they are really the oddity rather than the norm. The norm is that you just have hell on earth like this every time. Let's try to get that thin now the tricky bit's going to be uh, I might have to scrape it away after I've put the chip down uh, well we'll cure it like that and then we'll scratch back what we need 
And that should stop the resistors jumping around. Kryptonite, yes indeed. Okay, so we need our UV light now, which means things are going to get a little bit boring. I don't have one of those UV lasers, I'm not actually willing to even use one. Yeah, the main reason I don't like using the UV lasers is because UV is not great to have in your eyes and it can be so easy to accidentally have reflections come off something and then pew, shoot yourself in your eye. Shut your eye out, buddy. I mean, fine, I'm probably not dealing with multi-watt lasers, but you don't need much. And being UV, it doesn't take much. Okay, let's put our... 15 ohm resistors back into this horrible, horrible set. Ping Kong. Yeah, I recognise some of the characters on the the Chinese characters. Ah, now we wait another minute. Stuart, yeah, why don't you go to sleep? Yeah, I've got a mini torch. I've got a UV mini torch like this. But I prefer the USB powered one that I've got simply because of the fact that I don't have to make sure the battery is good or anything like that. And it's on a gooseneck, so it makes it very easy for me to just put the board under it, fold the gooseneck down, and let it do its job. Okay. Yeah, it looks like I've still got stuff okay in there. Does this work? Yeah, that works still. Oops, blinded the audience, not good. Get UV now hardness to plug it. Yes, uh, pretty much the same thing as this. Alright, let's see, has that done its job? Uh, that, that's pretty good. Alrighty, now to see if this will actually work. Let's flux up and get ready to put our chip down. Just fluff up the pads a little bit. No real point fluffing that one up. That's a big fat ground anyway. And this one's going to be marginal no matter what we try. So we're just going to have to cross our fingers and hope. Uh, let me see if I can drop down a little more. No, I'm asking for trouble. There's one resistor to the right of that area that looks a bit sad. Yeah, that, that probably is. There's a few of them around. Yeah, you're talking about this one over here, perhaps. It's actually got more oxidization than anything else. But there is a couple of sad ones that I have to fix up later.
Oh, you lousy. Yeah. 50-50. Alright, don't forget we've got all this trash to fix up too. This resistor here, I'm not overly worried about it. It does look a little bit sad, but it's, it is more oxidization of the lead. Okay, this one here doesn't look like we've quite got enough solder in there. So I'll try and squeeze a fillet in. This one kind of pushed the ball out a bit much, which worries me. We'll try to get some solder in there. I'll probably use some paste and then um, apply the iron tip to it. Some paste pull, not not a freaking excavator bucket full. Nah. Can't get the right angle. That'll do it. Okay. Actually, maybe I'll use some hot air on it. That took to it nicely. It's not perfectly aligned, but I'm really not caring, to be honest. Alright, next step. These chaps. They may not be so bad, we'll just... Resolder their end caps, see if they fall off, if they do, we replace them, if they don't, everybody's happy. Well, no disintegration there. No, they actually seem okay. They just need a wash. Well, that should be okay. We'll just flux them up a bit more. Alright, uh, so is that a test pad or is that a veer end of test pad? Yeah, they seem okay. Uh, at this point, I guess we power up and see what happens. I'm going for the fan spin. Oh, 
can't use my usual DCM board. Oh, I'll have to use theirs. I'm not going to bother connecting anything much other than just to see if we get a fan spin at this stage. Now the only thing I will plug in is my USB chipmunk tester. It'll give me an idea of what's happening on the CPU if anything. So we need MagSafe 2. And actually MagSafe 1's connected up. Okay, you're out of here. Come on, give us MagSafe 2, please. Negative. Positive. Okay, let's see, here we go. Green light. No fan spin. 20 milliamp, 50 milliamp. It's trying to do something, but something's holding it back. Looks like we've got a short or something going on because it's trying to come up but then shuts down straight away uh. alrighty so like we've got more dramas to deal with See if we've got something shonky. So it's getting into SO, but then shutting right back down. Yeah, that could be a little bit problematic there. That, that maybe that's a bit messy. We'll fix that up. Check for short to ground. Looks like Jack got wrong. Ray, thank you very much for the two pound. Thank you, Ray. Uh, SDS, what do you want the internet for? Okay, so I don't have a short there. We could still have the problem that maybe we're not getting our voltage there that we need. I think I'm going to have to take this DC inboard out so that I can do my testing. 
outside of the boil because I don't really want to have to keep putting it back in. SDS, you don't need the internet. Ah. It'd be funny if I had a bad DCM board. I'm pretty sure it's not that. Fairly sure. Well, on the other hand, that is kind of butchered. But I don't think that should be causing any trouble. That's just the USB. That's got a waffle great big crack in it. Okay. What's your board number? I'm fairly sure I got one of these somewhere. Uh, let's see, 11 inch, 13 inch, 13 inch. No good to me. <coughs> It's not a very common DC inboard to have. That's going to be a problem. Got a 1369. Nope, that's no good to me. Even that crack coil housing though shouldn't cause that problem. Let's have a look around. What I would love is if power supplies could indicate what the peak current experienced is, regardless of how long or short the spike is. Because even though we see, there's a couple, of, oh yeah, I've got to pick someone up. Even though we see, say, 80 milliamp come up on the power supply, that's often not really the true peak value. Um, a good example is the other night I was working on some 281 boards and it was telling me about 80 milliamp peak and it was pulsing. But the true value was close to about half an amp at 20 volts. So I was getting 10, watts, 10 watt pulses coming through the board. So it made it fairly easy to actually find them with um, just a heartbeat thermal method. So it'd be interesting to know if this is exhibiting a higher instantaneous current draw, and if it is, that would make it easier to track down a possible glitch. Uh, there's some pretty fluorescent wings there. I'm just having a quick look over, see if I can spot anything that looks like a severely destroyed cap. I don't think my luck's going to hold for that, but... But it really does feel like it's coming up and then shutting down due to an overcurrent situation. There are a lot of these little very pretty bug wings. Oh, they're little bug egg cases. So 
almost downright alien to be honest. What I should really be doing is pulling out the multimeter, going down the rails and seeing what has got um, a short on it. But you get lazy and you just sort of go, nah, I'll look for it. There's only 3,000 capacitors on here. <laughs> I'm not sure if the fan will spin without the bar, so I didn't quite know. On this board in particular. If Pernov was around, he'd know. Wednesday is it? It is indeed. Thank you, Jim. Hey Albert Einstein. Uh, I'm not sure if the wrong chip would be. I'm just going to measure some voltages around the board, see what we got. Yeah, 342 holds nice and steady, so that's good. Three V three sus. Again holding steady. Actually I didn't check that they were definitely all six one four. Ah, we made a mistake. Uh, I don't know if it's enough to cause the problem, but um, the resistor, the third resistor, this one up here. Oh wait, we didn't replace that one. We used okay six one one four. No, I'm wrong. All right, this resistor here is actually supposed to be twenty four and a half ohms. and this one is 15. Now whether it's enough to cause it to create a problem I'm not sure but it is wrong so we'll have to fix that. Crap. Damn it. 
I'm gonna check a couple of other voltages though while I'm at it. Because I really wouldn't think that that would cause it to do the behavior it's doing right now. I'm just feeling the board up. Find fucking find the hot spots. Check 3v3 SO since it's right here. You should see it come to life for an instant and then die. Yeah, it's trying to come up. Something's shorting it down. So it really does not feel like, I mean, yeah, the BIOS resistor needs to be fixed, but um, I don't feel like it's the cause. So I think it's time to go through and start checking the, uh, what do you call it, checking the rails, sadly. Bum, bum, bum. And the worst thing is I don't even have any rails set up for this. Yeah, sometimes I'm blind even to my own stuff. Ah, shorted out the damn rail. 8.58, that's pretty close to 8.6, so that's good. HS computing, blah blah blah. We're really looking for the higher ones. At the um, S S3 and whatnot. Actually, I think I'll do it on a resistance basis. So we'll shut off the power. Get a diode mode. Alright. Rethread a CPU. I don't think so. Not today. 3v3s4. Let's see, where was that pair? Point four three. Seems fine. 3v3 sus 
we tested before, we seem to be okay with that. Three V three S three. Big resistor near them. See one of you guys. Point four. So. Resistor near them. BIOS. I oh know, not BIOS. You idiot. 3-2 four, 6 fine but the microscope Eh, I'll get around to it. I did clean it last week. I'm not sure what that's... Yeah, probably... Things get dirty around here pretty quick when the bugs come out. Wow, nothing even on that one. Almost, almost. Would it be possible to beep out the flash lines? What? What do you mean the flash lines? Uh, what am I on? 1VO5S... 1VO5SUS Okay... So... Starting to drive me a little bit insane. One of the broken traces was data out. Yeah, but like I said, I don't think I don't think it should be causing this issue though. If anything, it should just sit there and pretty much do nothing rather than what it's doing right now. I mean, I'll have another look at it, but for the moment, I'm not quite ready to blame it. Point one one. Uh, 105.11. Damn it, I don't have a... I don't have a donut.
Yeah, better not be a dead CPU, that would be a laugh. Okay, we have to switch to ohms if we're going to test CPU. No, 136, we're fine. And besides, dead CPU would probably draw more. Fine. What about you, big guy? Oh, hello. This could be trouble. Nope. Okay, you're good. Well, the other thing we can do at this point is we can actually try the heartbeat location method. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we can try it. So you'll have to be on the lookout. I have a feeling it's not going to be any success on this, but we'll give it a whirl. Might start with the areas where there was corrosion. So I really don't have high hopes of this one. Because it just doesn't quite feel like it's one of those scenarios. This may warm up. Yeah. If this is what's blinking like that, then that's it's not what the fault is. Yeah, I can see it pulse. Yep, that's not the fault. It's pulsing, but it's not the fault. Alright, let's go in and change that damn resistor that I foolishly thought was going to be a 15, but in fact was not.
said it's a 24 and a half a 24 9 rather yeah, it's definitely a bit annoying but well that's what you get it's getting late but I don't sleep much lately as much as I want to sleep I don't sleep probably gets to around about 4.30 and I finally just involuntarily pass out Not that I'm actually functional in terms of doing work. So it's not like I can just stay up and, you know, just do things because that doesn't work. I'm tired, I just can't sleep. Big difference. Okay. That's what catnaps are created for, yeah. I wish that worked. Okay, now I know we're a little blind here. I'm also blind, actually. You can barely see what I'm doing. So I can drop some alcohol into there and clear it up. Clear away some of the green. Give us some room to put our new one in. bit messy all right so now we need to find ourselves a 24.9 ohm resistor uh, three or any of the MacBook Air boards should have that One of these up here will be it. And this is a 165 board. So we'll have a look around. Well, I'll have a look around. Alright. Looks like this middle one here by the clock chip is the one we want A and L yeah this could be all for nothing we're only getting about a 80 milliamp pulse periodically we are getting all the way up to SO rail, but then it shuts down. Get 
get some flux down here. I'd be very surprised if it's a dead CPU. It just doesn't feel like it. If, yeah, I don't know what it feels like. I'm going to turn this board around into a vertical orientation because it is easier to work on in this in that way. Contrary to complaints from Rossman Group. It's a terrible join, I admit it, but it's what we're going with. I'll reflow it, make it look prettier. It could be a bad bias, but like I said, it's still a little unexpected. But anyway, if this doesn't work, what we'll do is we'll drop in a just a donor bar. Oh, I don't have a donor. Not for this board. So that's the problem. Mm. At least I don't think I have. I'll, I'll dig through my box of junk and have a look. But I doubt it. It's not because I can't get them, it's just that just to rarely deal with these particular this model of board. Same thing. Jumps up to about a hundred, ninety, one hundred, and then drops back down to twenty one, fifteen. Yeah, so we get 5 volt, we get power, but the USB one, the middle one, is indicating CPU activity and we're not getting that, which isn't surprising. Yeah, let's see if I've got a donor. So I don't have high hopes for it, but you never know. Oh, street the Donor board box is getting heavy. Yeah, let's see what I got up in the trash pit. Ooh, what are you? 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 Are you a thirty? Please, 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 please be one. Jeez, if this is a working one, then I'd just drop it in and run. Hey, this is one. It's going to be easier for me to repair this than it is. If this works, then I may as well just um, give them the board. I think this was a someone. This was accidentally sent to me. Oh no, why have I got a screw there? Random screw, that's not good. Oh, I know what that screw's for. That's for the DC board. Get in! Son of a gun, get in. Wow, I'm struggling with. Oh, 
Okay, fan spin. This board works. This will do the three cycle on off on off on off thing because it's the same sort of uh, concept as the 3437. Uh, there we go. See, we've got the green light in the middle there. So we know that brain is alive. So we've actually got a reference board here. Now I could give it to him. But then I won't have a reference board anymore. Oh, bloody hell. And that's kind of cheating, isn't it? Something just fell on the roof. Eh, uh, Keith, I'm going to learn the language. Because when the Chinese come over and take over Australia, I want to be able to talk to them. So that I don't get uh, subjected to any horrors. Okay, what I'll do... I'll take the BIOS off this and then I'll read it into the system and then I will put it over here and see if this boots with that known working BIOS so here I am about to damage a perfectly good board and it's clean too, I've washed this board damn the things I do for money It's amazing, with glasses on, I can actually do this without using a microscope. Damn, these boards hold heat. The reason why I'm going to make a copy of this before I do anything is because if I botch it up, at least I want to have a copy of it. So what chip are you? You're uh, MX25 L64. Every single damn time, I forget which way is pin one. Okay. Uh, kind of most of the time, pretty much full speed. I, I set it at 110, but 120 is perfectly normal. For What did I say? MX 25L 640? Yeah, that was it. the damn suffix on it though. Not that it really matters, I don't think. 
to 60. Sixty, and it's a wide. It's on. So it's this one here. Yeah. So we're reading that now. Let me start making flex for same song. Uh, Kyle, well, if um, peop I don't have to make. That's the thing with flex board view, is that. It's not made for any particular brand or anything. The point is, if there are board view files for it in a f industry standard format, it should be able to read it. That's the whole point. That's why FlexBoard View is different to, say, ZXW or any of the others, is that it's made so that it will read board view files regardless of whether they're Samsung, Hitachi, Oppo, you know, whatever. So long as they're in an industry standard format, it will work. My hands are getting a bit uh, gnarly in the gloves. I'm just going to a hole on them and hopefully they'll dry out enough. Oh, I've got some distilled water. Cool. I'll use that. Okay, data's been read. Got some new gloves. Hands are still a bit dry, uh, a bit wet rather. Let's see if we go. I'm going to laugh if this does work. Yeah, did I kill chat? Is chat alive still? I guess if chat was dead, it wouldn't know. Alive, very good. Number five is alive. Oh, you're 34, 37, you're a donut. Get out of here. Confusing me. Oh, this is going to be sad to have to pull up all this good hard work. So have a moment of now because of this donor bias works we're still not out of the woods but I will have to reprogram a new one with the serial number and all that come on Uh, what movie were we talking about? I haven't changed the... I haven't done a damn thing to the system with the audio, so I don't know what's up with that. It's certainly nothing I've done. Oh, number five is alive. Oh, cracky, yeah. Uh, Some when you don't even know what you're saying on chat. It was funny because I was watching Alex Steele the other day and 
they were talking about short circuit as if it was some like amazing retro movie and I realised well it actually is ah why need to push that back down Oh, fire truck. Alright. Two points to work out what I did wrong then. God damn. Anyone know what I did wrong? Well, too late now if you're going to tell me because <laughs> I've already fixed it. Upside down. This is why you shouldn't do board repairs after midnight. Or at least not me at the moment anyway. It's down under. <laughs> it's almost a viable excuse. Send pad go to the right place. Hmm. Where does that go? should go to 3v3 sus over here. Okay. <coughs> there he goes. Okay, well, I guess without further ado, I should power it up and see what happens. It'd be a laugh if it's actually this um, USB port that's at fault. Well, I guess not really that much of a laugh. But it'd be funny if it was. Actually, it might be. Because I just realised that metal could be folding back onto the 5 VSO uh, line. But then we would have seen that in the measurements. Oh, it's so confusing. Okay. Holy shit, it was actually the BIOS. It's still not working properly though. See how it's just stuck in a permanent spin? So we haven't really solved anything. We've just traded one type of fault for another. Yeah, it's doing the dreaded it's doing the dreaded um, long, long fan spin shutdown. Long fan spin shutdown. I've seen this before on 34, 37 boards. I've never found a proper cause for it. Well, uh, you're kind of.
kind of had some life there, but... So it tries doing something and then gives up. What's going on? Uh, it's not quite working, Jason. It's kind of the equivalent of having the Apple logo stuck on your phone. So it comes up Apple logo, but nothing else. That's basically what this is doing. Like I said, I have 34, 37s do this a lot. No, I don't know what causes it. Oh man. Someone fried the thunderbolt on this. BIOS version, maybe. Oh no, you're a cactus board anyway. Oh, come on. I think what I... Oh man. I don't want to sell my reference board. Maybe I should just throw this in the ultrasonic to be honest. Now what I'm curious about is maybe if I put that uh, BIOS back on, or better yet, okay, let's go around in circles more. We'll take this BIOS here, it's the same size, we will flash it with the original BIOS that we got off the old, the broken one and then we'll see, we'll put it onto the board and see if it does the same sort of thing. I know it's a lot of stuffing around but we're just sort of trying to eliminate things here. So do we have, was it just a bit of bad luck? Did it not originally solder down properly? Or is it something to do with the actual code in the BIOS? Yeah, down the rabbit hole Oh, uh, thumbs down is a pretty normal. I have my dedicated thumbs down group. They're not very big groups, so if you want to join them, certain you can let them know. Just hit thumbs down twice. And that signals to them like a bat signal that you want to become part of their group. Okay, so we've got this bias chip off a 3437 and this will work because again it's a 64 it's the same type this poor board it's taken such a beating Okay, and this belongs to our reference board. Mm, never the twain should they separate. Again. Hey, Microfix. So we're loading this one up so we can flash it with the original BIOS code that we got off the board originally. Ah, get there. And that eliminates the possibility that maybe it just didn't like the chip. Did that solder on? Yep, nice shonky sky soldering. And good enough. That's some seriously shonky sky soldering.
Hey user, you're out of here, are you? Okay. And once again, Paul forgets the orientation. One. There's not much point putting a pen marker on this because it just comes off as soon as I use the uh, solder on it again. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wait for it to write. Hey, Stephen K. Oh, I'll bring the chat up here. It's all in there. Oh. Uh, the UK indeed does not have Paul Daniels anymore. Well, you kind of do, but he's buried there, so. No, the Australian one. I guess Paul Daniels got buried in the UK and came up down under. Oh, it won't be... Actually, that's what I'll do. While I'm waiting for this to flash, I will put that chip back on here. The correct way, too. Wow, multitasking. Except it's stuck on there. Now yeah, I'm going to have to put some leaded solder down. Because it's a working reference board and not just a donor board, I do actually want it to work. It's going to suck if I put this back on and it stops working. Yep, I'll do. Uh, we're only just starting the verifying process now, so I'll look a little more around on the board, see if I can spot anything else that maybe I missed. Maybe if I can find out what's causing this bizarre long slow um, spin loop problem then yeah there's a bunch of 3437s that I'll finally be able to fix at least we know the DC inboard's okay well and truly wasted my time on this one. Will not be getting my money's worth when I put in the invoice, that's for sure. Could be SMC I guess, but I have my doubts. 
Then again, I didn't think the BIOS change was going to change anything either. Oh good, it's finished. I don't know about learning value. Entertained maybe for everyone else watching, but the learning for me, I'm not sure. I guess that's why I've been asked to find out the true cause, and I guess that's what keeps me driving down the rabbit hole. Because like I said, if I can find out what's causing these slow long boot, uh, slow long loops, then it may actually be worth it. May. That's a big if. I might test that original pad that we only had the just a little pin ball on. Let's see, 34, 35, where did you go? Okay, according to the board view and schematic, this here should actually go over to there, I think. Yeah, over here on this, that little one there. And if it doesn't, we'll just run a wire. I probably should have done that original. You know, what's the point of doing things like that first? Oh, we're good anyway. Yeah, that top right pad. I haven't got around to it yet. They're all iffy pads. stuck on you. Hmm. Hang around in a bad neighbourhood and now you've got all goo stuck on you. Uh, VDiv, I'm not sure if tenacity is the right behavior to have in these situations. It's fine if you're doing it for research, but I'm not getting paid for research, really. Man, I really messed that up. Jack Hatler, no, at the moment I don't have anything else in the queue, which is kind of why I'm being bad to myself. If there were other jobs in the queue, I most likely would have run by now. I'm 
just testing that the lines are connecting properly. Where do you go to? Wait, what? Uh, let's see how we go now. If this doesn't come through, then I'm sorry, I am going to have to go to Sleepy Land. I'm not sure if we can call it much of a success, but at least we tried a few things. It's all about the journey. Yeah, right. Not when you broke at the end of it. Fan spin. It's a proper fan spin. It's a proper fan spin. Come on. Come on, give me some green. Bro, you gave me green. I hate using the word bro. It works. It's alive. So we must have had a bodgy connection there. Or we had a... Um, they just didn't like that bar strip that I had, so... Anyway, so we took it from a 3437 and we're alive now. Alrighty. Let's try the next step. Let's actually try and make it boot. Let's try and ruin our euphoria so that I can go to bed and feel really bad that I ruined a happy moment. I'm too lazy to... Come on, where are you, my darling cable? What? Where's my cable? Ah, there you are. Come here. Yeah, too lazy to insert this properly. So here we go. Turn off the lung saver. It's accessing the drive. I can see it flashing. And the screen looks like it is energized. Or oh, black. So we're either going to come up with a blinking folder. I hope. Wait a minute, I've never tried this cable on. Oops, don't chew the camera cable. It's still blinking. Come on, man. Oh, well, we've got a folder, so I'm happy enough with that. Where'd my folder go? It was there. Is that a slow blink? That is a very slow blink. That makes me think we've got sensor issues, temperature issues, maybe. I 
Now that is really slow, that blink. Nice to know that cable works on these screens as well. Okay, let's put it in. Very sloppy. so we can hear anything beeping SSD because it's faster keyboards up backlights up I'm probably missing something let's see if we go Well, Jack, I don't know if... I'm not convinced that that's a good answer, actually, at this point. It could be one of those things where it's a symptom for a wide, ra a wide range of faults. Kind of like missing PM sleep s for l I think we just had a bong. Privacy filter. Nothing coming up. Hello. Oh, up a logo. Yay. All right. We do, in fact. Can anyone see that, or is it too dark? Where are you, mouse? Come on. that I can't there's a display there but it's just so dim just trying to get the brightness up yeah you can you can just see it there you go so we're working alright good enough for me what a mess Okay, so we needed a new bus. The bus whole area was a train wreck. Uh, there's possibly other issues. We've got to put it through the ultrasonic cleaner. That may break some other things. Uh, that's a bit of a bit of a long journey, but we got it working. So I think now it's time for me to get some damn sleep or pretend to sleep. Probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a shower, have some ice cream. Go to my room, bring up Stan or Netflix, watch some trash, like, I'll probably watch Grey's Anatomy or something. Feels like a copy of Scrubs, but without the humour. And without the, um, without the completion of their storylines uh, many times. It's like, we found out how to cure the patient, and you don't know anything else. So thanks. Not only aren't you as funny as Scrubs, you're also far more incomplete. Let's see. I think I'll just leave that till tomorrow. Yep. Alright. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Hopefully it won't take as long next time, because I definitely lost money in terms of time on this one. You win some, you lose some. At least we sort of won this one. Alright, I'll see you later.